50 days transformed by prayer. So when I was younger, and it seems like so long ago, I used to be a camp counselor at Foothills Camp in Alberta. And what I did is I had a cabin full of girls and we used to play and have a lot of fun all summer. Now, on this particular day, I decided that I was given a key to my cabin and I didn't know what to do with it, so I quickly strung some beads around, kind of like this, kind of like this, and I put the key on the end of my beads, and I thought, okay, this will be a way that I can keep my key safe. So I put it around my neck all the day. It went well, kept my key safe, was able to get in and out of my cabin. We were out in a huge field playing uh, after lunch, and all of a sudden, I noticed my key was gone. My beads must have ripped and broken off, the key was gone and I was so shocked because where was I going to find it? We were in this huge field and the grass, because the grass in this field, it was, it was a little bit longer because, you know, in the summer they cut it every once in a while. So I was really, really worried and of course all the girls in my cabin were quite concerned and we had activities right after. If we had to go get a spare key, it would have taken time. They might have missed something. I of course felt really terrible because I was supposed to be in charge and here I was losing my most important key for our cabin. So I started to get really warm and I started to freak out a little bit and all of a sudden I thought we should pray, we should pray, maybe, maybe we'll be able to search and find this key, but we didn't have a lot of time. So the girls and I all got in a big round circle and we closed our eyes and we said a prayer just asking for Jesus to come and help us find this key. Where do you start? The field was huge and we were everywhere. We were running everywhere. After we prayed, all the girls fanned out and we went and we searched through the grass and within about five or seven minutes, one of the girls had found the lost key. I never, I never thought it would be that fast. I didn't even think we'd even find it. But we put our trust in God, we said a prayer and we stepped out in faith and we found that missing key. It gives me security to know that I can call out for help when I need it and that's what prayer means to me and that's kind of the theme, you know, right now, the hope that we have and that it's hope. Prayer is hope for me. Yeah, my daughter in 2015, was, I was expecting twins and she started having trouble right off the get-go and uh, by July she was already in trouble and that was only a couple months in. Didn't know whether it was going to go to term or not so anyway she uh, in the summer of 2015 in August she had to be put on bed rest. The babies weren't due until December and uh, I know it was during camp meeting actually is when she was put on bed rest and we let the word go out to both Mansask and Alberta camp meeting because she lives in Alberta and I live here in Saskatchewan and, and uh, we knew that the whole camp meeting was praying for their, um, that they would stay where they belonged till they at least reach 29 weeks which they say is a crucial point. And they, they did, they made it to 29 weeks. They were born three months early and they were in NICU in Calgary Children's Hospital for 111 days. But they came out breathing on their own. Uh, everything's fine. They're walking, they're trying to talk, like they're gonna have their second birthday coming up this September. Cause like I said, more than, they were born September instead of December, like they should have been, but they're walking and they're trying to talk. They can see, they can hear, everything seems to be fine. And uh, it's just quite an experience. To me, it, it wasn't so much that they stayed where they belonged till the crucial point of 29 weeks, as that I knew we had two provinces praying for us. That was so reassuring, so comforting to know that we had all those prayers behind us. And it got us through a very tough time. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing her next week. She's coming camping with us and 
the babies are fine. And I wanna thank everyone who prayed for us and prayer is so important, if for nothing else than to encourage me who needed to know I had a church family praying for me. Thank you. by prayer. It was World War II. The bombs were falling on the city of London. As a father and his six-year-old daughter were hiding in a bomb shelter inside the basement of one of the largest churches in the capital of England. Unfortunately, the mother of that girl had recently died in one of the bombings led by Hitler's army, as had her two older brothers. That night in the dark shelter, the little girl was lying down on the earth and the building was shaking, the ground was shaking from the bombs. Explosions were happening all over the place. The buildings were wobbling back and forth and, and the little girl was terrified. And she said, Daddy, please, please, Daddy, would you hold my hand? Daddy said, everything's gonna be okay. You need to get some sleep now. A few minutes later, another bomb fell close, and she said, Daddy, I'm scared. Please hold me. The father, grabbing onto his daughter and holding her close, said, It's okay, my dear. Try to get some sleep. All through the night, the bombs continued to fall, and finally, the little girl looked up and she said, Daddy, I'm only going to be able to fall asleep if I know that your face is turned my way. In this world bombarded by suffering and pain, we have the assurance of a present God who listens to our plea. He turns his face our way, and, and when he manifested himself to Moses, he stated that he knew what his people were going through. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt, and I've heard their cry because of their taskmasters for I know their sorrows. God is close to us. More than that, He is with us. In fact, He is so close that He can hear us when we seek Him in prayer. In Psalm 6, 8, and 9, the psalmist affirmed, Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity, for the Lord has heard the voice of my weeping. The Lord has heard my supplication. The Lord will receive my prayer. Different from other theories that present God as a absent, as an unreachable being who is indifferent to our feelings and experiences, the Bible presents an eminent God who is with us and who not only shares, but He experiences our joy, our sadness, and our fear. God is always available and approachable. When we invoke His name, for what great nation is there that has God so near to it as the Lord our God is to us? For whatever reason, we may call upon Him. He is not a God who hides as presented by many philosophers, but He is a God that is so close to us that we can reach and touch Him. We can touch Him through prayer that we can feel His loving arms around us in answer to our pleas. On this second day of our 50 Days Transformed Through Prayer Journey, I want you to have the assurance that you have a God who cares about you, that His hand is not concealed, unable to save you, neither is His ear deaf, unable to hear your petition. So why not seek Him? Why not share your anguish with Him right now through prayer? As you reach out toward heaven with your prayer, do not forget that prayer is the key in the hand of faith to unlock heaven's storehouse, where are treasured the boundless resources of omnipotence.